Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to Bullseye, creating our first iOS application. Now in this video, we're going to be doing something that I honestly hate to do, but it must be done, and that is constraints. Now constraints, or commonly known as auto layout in Xcode, allows you to basically say that, hey, wherever my objects are placed in this view, I want it to look the same for all the different iPhone sizes that exist. Right now, there's the 5S, the 6, the 6S, the 6 Plus, 7, 7 Plus, and many of these devices have different screen sizes. When you're creating an iPhone application, you have to realize that, hey, you might own a 7 Plus, and you might be testing on the 7 Plus and it looks great, but you also have to remember that someone with the 5S, someone with the 5, they might be using the exact same application. And in that scenario, you need to make sure that, hey, your application works on that device. So that's where constraints come in. Constraints allow you to position your UI objects or your basically objects on your UI view and position them such that on every single view they look the same. Okay? So I'll go ahead and show you how to add constraints to the various objects that we have on our screen right now. Starting off with the play again button. So the way you add constraints, there are multiple ways. The way that I like to do it is by control clicking on your button, okay, and then selecting where you want to add the constraint. So normally what you can do with Xcode is if you command A on the view, select everything, and then I'm going to go ahead and make this a single view. So if you select everything, and then in your bottom right corner of your screen, you could say reset to suggested constraints. Okay? I do not recommend this. This is not something any iOS developer should do. What Apple does is it thinks that these are the best constraints. It'll go ahead and apply them. But as you might find out later on in developing applications is that normally, when Apple applies its own constraints, they don't work out for many of your applications. So this is one way. If you're in a time crunch, if you don't want to test anything out, if you just want to apply some constraints and see if it works, go ahead, select all of your objects and hit reset to suggest suggested constraints. Okay. Otherwise, what you can do is you can go ahead and manually add constraints to every object. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to control click and play again, go to the top of the screen. So again, we're still in the view and hit top space to safe area. Okay. Fantastic. The next thing we're going to do is click on the play again, control click, go to the right hand side of the screen and hit trailing space to safe area. Okay. So what does that do? That takes our button and we're saying that, Hey, the space between our button and the top of this view, which is known as the safe area, we want that distance to remain constant. It should be a constraint. So if you click on this ruler icon, the size inspector, you can see the two constraints we just added. The first one aligned to top is zero. The distance between our button and the safe area should be zero. And the distance between the right hand side of the screen and our button should be 16 pixels. Okay. So no matter what iPhone you're using, no matter what iPhone device you have, your button will always be zero pixels on the top and 16 pixels on the right hand side of the screen. Okay. Now, once we set that, it's not telling us to set the width and the height, but I normally like doing this. I'm going to go ahead and specify the width and the height of my of my button. The way I did this is I went ahead and I selected this middle icon, which is basically a square inside of two square, um, two straight lines. And by selecting this and selecting the play again button, so select the play again button and hit the object over here and select width and height. So this allows us to add two constraints, the width and the height to our play again button. And by doing so, our button will always be this size and it'll always be in this position, the top right hand side of the screen. So let's go ahead and run this. And now you're going to notice that our play again button is not shifted to the left. It's going to be to the top right of the screen. So hit check. Fantastic. Now we're going to, have to do this for all our other components on our view. The next thing is our label. So the first thing we're going to notice with the label is that it's centered vertically. Okay. So what we can do is we can go ahead and drag and drop to the left hand side of the screen and say, sorry, center horizontally in safe area. Okay. The next thing is we want to set the distance between this label and our play again button. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's keep this distance between our label and the play again button constant. So this vertical constraint should remain the same. The next thing is to go ahead and add the height and the width. You can either select this label, go into our sort of inspector over here and hit width and height, which always works. Or what you can also do is control click on your label and drag around to the left or the top. So if you're still on the label and you drag to the left, you can select the width. And if you select, if you select the label and drag to the top, you can select the height. Okay. 
Fantastic. So we added constraints for this label. Let's go ahead and add constraints to this slider. Center horizontally in safe area. Set the vertical spacing. And let's go ahead and give it a width of, of over here. Add one constraint. Fantastic. The next thing is going to be the check button. So the check button has to again have the same stuff. We have our vertical spacing. We're centering it in the middle. We have our width and our height. Again, I can do it over here. So we have our width and we have our height. Fantastic. The next thing is to get our result label up and running. Result label, same thing. Control click to check button. Vertical spacing. Control click to the left side. Center horizontally in safe area. And go ahead and add our width and our height over here. Great job. And then we have our exact mode, our exact mode to our vertical spacing. We have our center horizontally in our safe area. And then we have our width and our height. Great job. And last but not least, we have our switch. So switch vertical spacing, switch center horizontally. And you can't really change the width and the height of a switch. So go ahead and save that, run this. And let's go ahead and see what our new interface looks like. I know this is tedious, guys, and it's definitely a lot of work. But honestly, once you set constraints the first time, everything else falls into place. Doesn't our app look fantastic now? Go ahead and check. Great job. Everything is center aligned. It looks perfect. And that is the power of constraints, allowing you to make your app look the same on every single iPhone device. Anyways, that's it for my side, guys. If you have any questions on constraints, don't hesitate to ask. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.